Hello, I'll start our presentation on the Hunting Corner Exploit with Vice Temposer. Uh, first of all, let me briefly introduce the table of contents before starting. For the beginning, I'll briefly introduce our team and why we selected this topic. And let me tell you how most of vulnerabilities affect various OS. Then I'll tell you in the order of trade and monitor, analysis crashes, and kernel exploitation. This project was conducted in the security talent training curriculum called BOB. Uh, there are two mentors and one PM. And I, I, I am in charge of the PM, and there are three team members. Uh, there are various file systems in the world. However, there are few cases of attacks through the file system. This is because it is a weak attempt model. At this point, you might say, uh, isn't it not already root privilege to mount the image. Uh, however, if you put it in a USB and plug it into PC, it becomes auto mount without any need for root privilege. Uh, at this time, if the corrected image is mounted, kernel panic can occur. Uh, in this way, there was an attack model through USB, and we used Yanus. We developed a web monitor, analyzed one day, and successfully leaked memory. At last, we exploited kernel through zero day. There are various OSs in the world, and there are many file systems used for each OS. Our file systems are large and complex, and making it difficult to find bugs. The file system is not suitable for editing because the code quantity is best that follows. So we use a file system folder named Janus. Uh, however, file stems are managed in the corner space, so they can be a good attack surfaces. In addition, corner interaction is possible in user mode. Uh, each process is access one file system. Wave or race condition box can occur frequently. Janus uses the Linux kernel library, which is called LKL. LKL is a library of kernel at the application level. It is generally used to lightly emulate the kernel with can you. Uh, LKA is not a kernel. Sources are organized in Linux libraries separate from the kernel version. So the version of the LKA is always lower than the kernel version. The reason for using LKA is to recover quickly and attach AFL when purging. Uh, let me explain how Janus works. First, remove the metadata from the image and mutate it. Second, mount with mutated image and metadata. Finally, operate the syscore that leads lies image files. This way, it operates at two dimension. The file system looks for files by inode as metadata. Because metadata information is mutated and a crash occurs. Even if data is mutated, it is useless. After creating an image, system calls are called randomly to induce kernel panic. Therefore, it occurs when mount, sync, and unmount. Our targets are ext4, f2fs, and vtrfs, which are file stems that are auto-mounted in Ubuntu. Especially, ex4 is auto-mounted in many OSs. As the most basic file system, there is metadata in the block based on an inode table, and further we mutate this. PTRFS is light, efficient V3 based memory management and features automatic defragmentation. PTRFS is optimized for SSD and allows you can use it like a single SSD, although multiple plug in. F2FS is a file system optimized for NAND flash created by Samsung for flash memory. Uh, when the price is inquired by the actual Zerodium company, the price is set as follows and the box they want should remain long. Uh, file stems are managed individually, so even if a bug is patched, it is reflected in the corner late. When applying the found issues, a uh, bug occurs in various ways as follows. Uh, 3 in Ubuntu, and 4 in Bloom OS, and 25 in Amunica OS, and 2 in Lesta OS. Uh, then I'll show you that what causes kernel panic when USB is plugged in on a smart TV. The video shows that an existing flash sheet is affecting the device you are using. Uh, the vulnerability is CV 2018 01 
7 line and the target TV is a Samsung TV released in March 19th. The corresponding OS is Kaizen 5. Uh, the team is using a TV and uh, attacker with a malicious USB plugs the USB into the TV. Afterwards, uh, kernel panning occurs and you can see the team's TV freeze. Uh, if debug is possible, I have seen the possibility of exploit. We ported it to version 5 of the kernel and then uploaded it to 5.3. But there were many duplicate crashes and many invalid crashes. Therefore, trace was developed and the crash file was changed to a mountable image. And the Kazan memory analysis plugin was installed there. Uh, reproduced through Cameo, Unicrash was classified according to the type of the bug and then saved in DB. We built the Trace with Cameo and Python. On Trace start, firstly, the Trace Python script runs Cameo system and insert the crashable file system image. Secondly, Trace writes shell command to reproduce crash with input pipe. Thirdly, check the shell output command contains Kassan report with output pipe. Lastly, Trace roll back the Cameo system to clean state with Cameo monitor. Uh, efficiently checked and managed through the web monitor. You can remotely set and run file system folders and check the crash lists. Uh, I will show you the monitor demo video. Uh, first, after pressing the plus button, uh, write the folder name and select the file system target and assign a phone number. Then success notification appears and you can see the puzzle running as follows. When you enter the crash path, there are a list of found crashes and if you click to enter, you can see the detailed custom report. When you click the image at the bottom to download. And you can check the running folders on the dashboard and press stop to stop the folders. Uh, you can also check the crash and crash types of the last seven days on the dashboard. Below that, you can see the trace process status and a list of recent crashes. Uh, this is the overall structure of the trace and monitor. The blue part is the automated way and the green part is the part where we analyze our load code. The process is as follows. When Fodger finds a crash, it goes through triage and saves the Kassan report to DB, which can be managed efficiently through the monitor. Uh, we download the image from the monitor and reproduce it with CANU, then analyze it with during the Kassan report and load the exploit code. There are a total of 16 CVs reported by us. Uh, some of the reported CVs will be explained by our team members. Let me explain the CV ratio we reported and detail analysis of CVE. The following is the percentage of CVE we obtained per file system. The number of CVE that we reported was a total of 16, which is small, but 
it can be seen that they occupy a significant portion of the CVE ratio per pi system. This means that there is not much research on the vulnerability of the file system. It would be nice if additional research on file system was done in the future. So, since the final goal of our analysis of this crash is LPE, we internally score each crash from 1 to 10, depending on the extent of exploitability. Now, I will explain the analysis of each crash type. First, null pointer reference vulnerability. The uh, ext4 mtdir function check if there are any files in the directory when executing a command that relates a directory such as rmdir. The vulnerability is structure pointer core bh in the ex4 mtdir function. If the pointer becomes the the location of B data is not calculated. If the next loop fails to find next entry during the loop of the function, if the return value of the ext4 read dir flow function becomes zero. Uh, then, the next loop is a null pointer reference vulnerability that occurs because the location of BHB data is not calculated. For the exploit of the null pointer reference, you need to assign memory to a low addresses. But, however, the general address protection protects the null region. So, if you use the null pointer reference vulnerability, you can only do kernel panic. So, it is not much difference different from turning off your PC. Uh, so we gave one point for the vulnerability. Next, 19036 vulnerability. PTRF's root node function is a function to safely, safely get the root node uh, of a tree. A uh, vulnerability that occurs in DTRFS root node, this is a null difference point of vulnerability that occurs when the return value of the RCU difference function is null. In the extent, extent buffer structure point of EB. And cannot let to the location of EB labs. Since this vulnerability is also a null reference point of vulnerability, we gave it one point internally. Next is the slab OV vulnerability. PTRFS file system provide basic aid for multi-device file systems. PTRFS supports latest one I uh, zero, one, one zero, and five and six. And a uh, notable feature in PTRFS laid is self-healing redundant arrays. The uh, self-healing redundant arrays is a function that find and recover error in files with duplicate copies. 
the vulnerability is the slab of the vulnerability that occurs in the index RBIO pages function of BPLFS. Striping in a lathe is a technology that can be used in parallel by storing data on one or more disk for performance improvement. And logically continuous data can be physically divided into multiple disks. Uh, in this vulnerability, the stripe offset is obtained using laid map zero to find the page index. Uh, in order to use the strike function smoothly, the data is arranged and the striping value of the stripe is entered at late map zero. In order to obtain the page index from the vulnerability, uh, it is used in BioPage after obtaining page index using the starting address and stripe offset. As page index is larger than the array value of BIO pages, an OB vulnerability occurs. There are three issues that must be overcome to exploit this vulnerability. First, the value of RAID map zero is the starting value of the aligned strike. And we need to know how this value come in. Second, we need to do hip peng sui su to place the desired object in the other just sense memory of RBIO, BIO pages. Finally, we need to change is change the BVC that BV page value to be overwritten to the value we want. We we thought the uh, there were many problems to overcome, so we gave it three point internally. Next is one nine four four nine vulnerability. First, F2FS manages the file system using four functions: checkpoint, segment information table, model address table, segment summary area. Checkpoint maintains file system status bitmap for NAT SIT set a list of open inodes and the summary entry of the current tree current active segment SIT is a table that contains segment information such as the number of valid block and bitmap for the validity of all blocks NH is table of addresses for all node blocks. Finally, SSA is a summary entry that contains information about the owner of the data and node blocks. So, F2FS has checkpoint SIT and AT SSA for each chip log and accesses file and directories using checkpoint and NAT. This vulnerability that occurs when signal or I value is incorrectly calculated in the init bin max m time function and a value larger than the size of the of the existing arrays is entered and larger value is entered into get entry 
as an argument to retrieve the m time value of the OB memory area. Uh, we need an arbitrary read write to exploit the OB, but m time variable is alone. We thought it would be difficult to exploit, so we gave three points internally. This is the last OB vulnerability. The variables old size and new size are set during the process of setting up an entry for the EXT profile system. These two variables are defined as size on the T. Among these, the value stored in all size calculated so a function called LE322CPU due to difference between the 32-bit and 64-bit data types, unexpected large value may be set. This is a vulnerability that occurs when there is no code to verify the value after that and very large area from the first bar pointer memory is initialized zero. Uh, I wanted to use this vulnerability, but the memset itself was only zero. And in order to use another method I had, to consider uh, the side effect that occurred when the value was initialized to zero. So we gave it four internal points. Next is the UAF vulnerability. Uh, the vulnerability is UAF vulnerability that was crafted by the RWSEM can spin on owner function. Uh, call I'll see you read rock and execute the owner on CPU function uh, to find out who the current owner is. Uh, if the log is free when the owner is in write mode, all data in the object is also deleted, but in the read mode, the data in the object is left even if the rock is free, so it is used as core dump information. The Owner on CPU function is handled handled by receiving a pointer. So if a free object enter it my functions, therefore if we doing mount twice, we will have a problem due to the remaining pointer. When the first mount is performed, the owner in the semaphore is set to read permission in and is freed when unlocked. At this time, when you mount the second, the free object will have a dummy value and because it does not map with the RWSM as SEM leader variable. It goes into the owner on CPU function as it is. Uh, if we push in the heap where before the owner object is re-referenced again, we can exploit it if you control well the owner value. So we gave it six points internally. 
next is one nine four four seven vulnerability. This vulnerability is a UA vulnerability that occurs in the dump open list function inside the ext4 put super function. Uh, this is a vulnerability that occurs when the free inode is not scanned and print. The exact free point has, uh, has not yet been analyzed, but the possibilities depends on how the free inode put is put in. Uh, first, if the inode is still being used as a dangling pointer, it can be used by overwriting another value in the memory references by the inode. And secondly, if the free inode is used uh, incorrectly only in the open list, only memory leak is possible. So we gave it three points internally. Next is 19448 vulnerability. This vulnerability occurs in the PTRFS try tri merge free space function. There are uh, two pointer right info and left info inside the function. It is a UAF vulnerability that occurs by manipulating the file system image, causing the two pointers to point to the same object. And after the right info object is free, referring to the same address. If we can put another object at the timing of re-reference of the freeze object, we can hijack the control flow of this function. However, the assembly calls spacing was so short, so short that it was difficult to push the object. So we gave it seven, seven point internally. Last one nine three seven seven vulnerability. This is a vulnerability caused by the PTRF queue work function. A free work queue comes into the function and a vulnerability occurs when referring to WQ high. If you know free timing, then you can easily exploit it by pushing another object. Uh, also, the work queue structure has a meaningful pointer. So, if you have a triggering part of the function pointer, Control flow hijacking is possible. So, uh, we gave it seven points internally because it is very exploitable. Before exploit this vulnerability, we need to know the general Linux kernel exploitation methods. In general, if we can write the arbitrary value to kernel memory with the vulnerability, there are two main ways to execute attackers shell code. The first way is overwriting the function pointer in kernel memory to execute the attackers shell code. If we overwrite the function pointer called 
on the kernel root into address of article share code and then call a uh, syscall to the kernel to call the overwriting function pointer. The second way is overwriting the structure pointer in kernel memory to reference articles of uh, fake structure. If we overwrite the structure pointer re reference on the kernel routine, the article can write or call arbitrary address using kernel routine. So, to prevent these exploitation techniques, SMAP and SMEP mitigations are applied to to corner. Firstly, SMAP mitigation protects corner from modifying structure pointers. If structure pointer referenced by corner routine points use user memory space in a curse page port. Secondly, SMEP, mitig SMEP mitigation protects corner from modifying function pointer. If function point called by kernel routine point user memory space, it occurs page port. These two mitigations controlled with CR4 registers 20 and 21 bits. So to bypass these mitigations, we should override the CR4 registers 20 and 21 bit to zero. We can bypass mitigations by using return oriented programming, aka ROP, or using wrong permission setting on physical memory core return to DIR. The ASLR is a mitigation which maps process memory section randomly on each execution time. It protects process from articles memory referencing and the same mitigation applied to kernel as KSLR. We need to know Linux kernel heap spraying technique because the vulnerability type is UAF. So we need to spray the kernel heap. Firstly, user can allocate the kernel heap directly. User can access to kernel memory directly. So we must be specific this call to allocate or free kernel heap memory. Secondly, allocatable block is Size is limited. Each Cisco has different allocate, uh, allocatable size. So there is some possibility of heap spray failure. Lastly, user process can use same Cisco. So it shares same common heap memory and there is some possibility of heap manipulation failure. Like this, four process use specific syscall X, Y, Z, and the syscall allocates same kernel heap memory. To summarize, there are three rules to spray kernel heap. Firstly, the syscall must be user callable with low privilege. Secondly, the allocation size should be flexible. Last, lastly, the contents of heap block must be controllable. And we could find the sprayable syscall as follows. First syscall is message sent. This syscall takes size 
and value to allocate kernel heap memory from this call parameter. The heap block contains header on first 48 bytes. Second, this call is send message and send M message. This is called text size and value to allocate kernel heap memory from Cisco parameter, but the allocatable size is limited by socket type. In heap block, no header included. The last Cisco is add key. This is called text size and value to allocate kernel heap memory from this call parameter, but allocatable size is limited by socket type. On ex exceeding the syscall, call, this call freeze allocated heap block in heap block 18 bytes header included. So we exploited other all the CBES practice. It was EXT4 UAF vulnerability like our UAF vulnerability. Left side is kernel debugger. Right side is test shell first. Check kernel data section is full with nullbyte. And with exploit, we got kernel heap address and write arbitrary value to kernel memory. It checked same time kernel address is full with B byte. So we can start to exploit the vulnerability. First, let's see the root cause of vulnerability. The PTR request file system uses kernel work queue feature to async operations. On user call, you mount comment or unplug USB. The remount syscall starts and it calls close C3 function. Pre the work, work queue in PTR request stop all worker function and continue the close C3 routine. In the iPod function, it checks async option is on. And finally, curve the TRFS Q work function and reuse the pre work queue structure. It sounds like easy. Just reallocate worker structure and follow the routine. But there are some problems. First, free and reuse of target structure happens in a place. Secondly, the target structure is too small as 16 bytes. So we use place condition light allocation and find another hip frame technique. And we could another we could find another frame technique in detecting a 17 years old kernel bug. Vitaly uses a new heap spring technique for 16 bytes size spring. He uses set XA TTR syscall for heap spring. It, it's a user callable, flexible, controllable, and no header included. But it destroys heap lock on exit. When calling the syscall, user can set memory address of contents and allocate it. After allocation, it copies contents in user memory to kernel memory. But it destroys the kernel memory or next it. So Vitaly uses user port at the syscall to prevent memory free. If user port at the set on page two, Memory lead try on page to invoke page port and call pre-registered handling function. 
and in handling function call flip or while true to delay memory free. When calling this call, user can set memory address contents and allocation size. At this time, set user property on page E. After allocation, it copies contents in user memory A and to user memory A to kernel memory. And it continues to copy page two, but page port occur, occurs by user port FD and flip the thread to prevent memory free. So we can reallocate target structure in the kernel heap successfully. The final test is analyzing the kernel operations with straight structure pointer. The that WQ variable is corrupted and call the TRFS Q work function with it let's trace. From the vulnerable function DTRFS Q work, kernel calls some functions to start worker thread. And the worker thread calls select task IQ function, but it's a function pointer in the corrupted structure. So it is, this is the structure reference pointer that structure reference flow. If the SMAP mitigation is off, user can build the thread structure in user memory. And finally, set the set X, select test to IQ function pointer in the corner circle to the corner circle. It's the DMESG print out for the RI handling. RIP appears to arbitrary value. In here, um, multiple view. We will show you the demo video. User has mount permission to call U mount syscall and the SMAP and SMEP mitigation of. In the user circuit, in the user share, user can't open secret file and after executing the POC script, some crash occurs. Finally, we got good show. And we can open the secret file. Thanks for listening our presentation. Thank you.